Hi. Ah, hello. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming tonight. This is our glory, first Sunday glory night. Are you ready for some glory? Yes. The goodness of God manifested, the power of God manifested, and the presence of God manifested. Oh, don't you love his presence? So let's open in prayer, and then Ginger's going to lead us in worship. Father, we just come before you tonight. We thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the fellowship and the, the joy of sharing with, your, with the family. Father, we just thank you for that. And we just pray, Father, tonight that you'll direct everything. You're, we thank you for those gifts and anointings that you've placed within Ginger and, in, and with in Kenneth, and with each one of us, and with David as he ministers the word. And we just trust you, Father, to accomplish your purposes. We pray for those who are tuning in online. We pray that you'd bless them tonight. Minister to them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Ginger Rose. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, the glory is here. Because we are here. He is here. His glory is here. Amen. Amen. Well, Kenneth felt led to get us going with this song, so we're going to jump right in. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you.
scripture that goes with this song. Revelations chapter 5 verse 8 says, Now when he, Jesus, the Lamb, had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. All the saints and angels
worship you. We worship you. Let your praise rise. Oh, Brasilia, Brasilia, Brasilia. Pastor got up here. I got another song, so I think we can go to this one. Um, it's called "We We Gather Round the Throne" or "Gather Round the Throne." It's either we or just gather. Gather round the throne. Is it under we? Or we gather. We gather round the throne into the secret place of the Lord Most High. We gather round the throne into the secret place of the Lord.
are here in our midst. Thank you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So be free in me. Begin to rejoice and know that I have set you free. Free to walk in victory. Free to walk in power and boldness. Free to walk in all that you need. I have set you free. I am the God of liberty. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. Hallelujah. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in every area of our lives. We declare freedom, victory. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I take. Laugh at the you know, devil. Sometimes you just have to laugh at him. See, ha ha, Man. devil. Huh? Ha, ha 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 ha. You are defeated. Amen. You are under my feet. Yes. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Divine glory is his name. Amen. Oh, Amen. divine glory. Amen. You are the divine glory, Father. <laughs> Woo! All right. Let's just keep going higher. Amen. You be seated. started what we need to do is just that last song we sang you know that's a faith song what do you need I mean we were singing okay so now we're going to take the time to do just what we sang I just I have it in my heart in my spirit that we're supposed to take a minute what do you need what do you need just reach out and receive and call it yours and it will be yours that is faith Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, if you've got a problem, don't say what it is. Say what it is to be. Hallelujah. And it is to be lined up with God's word. Hallelujah. God solves problems. He is the problem solver. Hallelujah. So let's just take a minute. What are you believing God for? Take it today and don't let go. Don't let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Every need is met. Hallelujah. In this building, on the internet, every need is met. Whatever anyone is believing for, Father, I thank you right now it's theirs. Hallelujah. We stand on the Word of God. We stand on your promises, Father God. Hallelujah. You say you'll supply every need. You'll give us the desires of our heart. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you. Whatever anyone's believing for right now, according to your word, hallelujah, be it done unto them. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. Don't say anything different. It's mine. That's what you should say. It's mine. It's done. Hallelujah. Don't say anything different. Don't say anything different. It's yours. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray a second here before we get a minute before we get started. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. Father, we thank you. You give us 
eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand what you'd have us here today, tonight. Father, we thank you that your word will never return void. <clears throat> it will always accomplish what it's sent to do. Father, we thank you that Jesus is more than enough. Hallelujah. Your grace is sufficient. And Lord God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew 6. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now what's all the things that's going to be added unto you when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Now the kingdom of God is how God does things. It's the way God works in our lives. Hallelujah. So we need to find out, and we will in the word, how the kingdom works and to seek his righteousness living as we should live as Christians. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but there's also righteous things we need to do. We need to do what's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. We can't just live any way we want and still expect God to move in our lives. We have a responsibility to walk. You know, pastor this morning talked about walking in the light that we have. Hallelujah. So it's our responsibility to do that. But if you go back, let's go up to verse um, 28. And why take you thought for the raiment? Consider the litters of the field, litter, litter, the lilies of the field, <laughs> how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And we all know how wealthy Solomon was, all that he had. But even the lilies of the field, he wasn't arrayed like them. And they don't, they don't work at it. That's just what they are. That's what God made them. They didn't, they didn't have to work and, uh, you know, worry and toil what they would look like. They were planted, and that's what they looked like. That's what they, got, they became. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven... Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Hallelujah. If he's going to take care of the lilies, why in the world wouldn't he take care of us? Amen. Amen. He's going to take care of us. We don't even have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about anything. Hallelujah. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? He will feed you. What shall we drink? He will give you drink. Or with, wherewithal shall we be clothed? He will clothe you. God will take care of you. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Now some Christians read that far and they quit. They say, well God, I've heard people say, well God knows what I need and he'll just give it to me. Well, you know, let's turn over to <clears throat> chapter 6 and verse Eight, it says, But be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask of him. Then in verse 7, 7 it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Father does know what you need, but he expects you to ask for it. Why do you have to ask for it? Because we're to walk by faith. If we don't ever have to ask for anything, faith's not involved. And the only way we can please God is by faith. So we have to ask him for things to walk by faith. Yes, he knows what we need and he's provided it for us in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Now let's turn over to chapter Luke chapter 17. Verse 21 says, Neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Everything you need in this life is inside of you. 
The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Whatever you need is in you. It's there. We need to learn how to draw it out. We need, and that's what we're going to see tonight. We're going to see, how do we draw out what's inside of us? It's, we need to be, learn how to live from the inside out instead of the outside in. We need to learn to live by the kingdom principles, by the kingdom of God, how God does things. Hallelujah. And he's told us how we can do that. Amen. So now let's go to John 18, 36. Hallelujah. Laying a little groundwork here before we get into it. John 18, 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. It's a heavenly kingdom. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. See, when we live from the outside in, then we're, li we're, we're living by the world system. But when we learn to live from the inside out, then we're living by the kingdom principles. We're living by the kingdom of God that's inside of us. Hallelujah. Everything you need in life's there. We just got to learn how to draw it out. Philippians 3.20. I love to hear pages turn. <laughs> for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that word conversation means citizenship. So it, you can read it, our citizenship is in heaven. We're citizens of heaven. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Ambassadors in the earth. You know, just think, the United States has ambassadors all over the world. Now, they can be an ambassador to a third world country that's dirt poor. Three-fourths of the people can be starving. You know, 90% of them not even have a job. Don't even have clean water to drink. But although they're in that country, that's not their source. The United States is their source. The United States pays for everything for that ambassador and his family. Hallelujah. So they don't have to worry about where's my next meal coming from. They don't have to worry if the country goes to, you know, it, it, you know if the economy's down, things look bad. They don't have, it doesn't, it doesn't affect them. It does not affect them because they're just representing the United States. They don't live in that country. They're in it, but they're not of it. They're in the country. They're not of it. And that's how we are as ambassadors of heaven. We're in this country, this world, <laughs> now this country, United States. But we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We represent heaven. So this world is not our source. This world system is not my source. Heaven's my source. Hallelujah. And there's never been any lack in heaven. Never. The streets are made of gold. The foundations of the city are pearls and all kinds of precious stones. Hallelujah. So there's never a lack in the, in the kingdom of God, which is inside of me. There's never a lack. So I've got to learn to draw that abundance out. I've got to learn how to draw that out to live from inside out. Hallelujah. And when we can do that, then we can walk free of the world system. It doesn't matter what's going on in the earth. It doesn't affect us unless we let it. Now, if we let it affect us, it will. But we can walk above anything that's going on in the earth today. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom within us. Hallelujah. Whatever, everything we need, everything we need is already here. We just got to learn to draw it out. Hallelujah. So we are ambassadors of heaven. We're just here for a short time. I, you know, if we live to be 150, 160 before the Lord comes, I'm not saying it's going to be that long, but if it is, and you desire to live that long, you can. It's up to you. But you, what's that compared to heaven? Eternity. 
it, we're just here for a short time. A very short time. Hallelujah. So we're just ambassadors of what heaven's like. Just like if I was an ambassador of France, I would show France what the United States was like. I would represent the United States. So we need to show the world what the kingdom of God is like. And the only way we can do that is if we walk in the kingdom principles. If we walk the same way the world walks, we don't have anything to show them. We don't have anything to show them. If we're just as broke, just as sick, just as poor, just as down in the mouth as the world, what have we got to show them that's any different? They know what that life is. They're living it. So we need to show them something different. And what we need to show them is how the kingdom of God works. That's what's going to change lives. Because when we have an abundance, when they can't pay their rent, we can pay the rent for them. If they need a car to keep a job, we can buy the car for them. Because we have an abundance. That abundance is to meet our needs, but also to bless the world, so the world will see how good our God is. He gets all the glory. See, they, once they see how good our God is, they'll want the God you're serving. But if all they see is serving the God you serve, you just get, barely get along like they do, what's the advantage? What's the advantage? But when you show them the kingdom, the way the kingdom operates, you show them how heaven operates, then you got their eye. You got them where you need them and you bring them to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's go to Matthew 4.23. Everything you need's in there. Hallelujah. It's in you. The kingdom of God is in you. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So the kingdom of God includes healing. It's, it's just part of it. It's healing. There's no sickness in heaven. Does everybody believe that? I mean, I'm sure every there's no sickness in heaven. So we're, we're showing, we're living by kingdom principles. When I, if I was a foreign minister, ambassador to another country, I still live according to the United States. Not according to that country. Okay? So, we're here. We live according to heaven, not the earth. Hallelujah. There's no sickness in heaven. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord should not be sick. There's no poverty in heaven. Hallelujah. So, the gospel of the kingdom includes healing. If it doesn't include healing, it's not the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ preached and it's not the gospel that Peter preached or Paul or Stephen or anyone else preached that's in this book healings included in the gospel let's go to Luke 9 and verses 1 and 2 then he Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, you know, pastor has taught us that what God does, what, when God backs up the word that's preached, right? So he confirms the word with signs and wonders. So if they preached the word and healed the sick, Somebody had to be preaching when they was preaching on the kingdom, had to be preaching about healing. God confirmed it by healing people. Doesn't that make sense? God confirms his word. So when the kingdom is preached, healing is there also. Healing is there also because healing is part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Acts verse, chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. The former trees have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach 
until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after the, his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God the last forty days Jesus was on earth he was teaching his disciples the principles of the kingdom of God so it must have been pretty important Jesus spent the last 40 days on earth teaching the disciples on the kingdom of God. How the kingdom operated. The principles that operate the kingdom of God. Why? So they could walk in the kingdom principles and show it to the world. Show the goodness of the Father to the world. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4, 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. See, when the kingdom's taught, when the true gospel is taught, power is there for healing, miracles, and anything else that's needed. Not just words. The gospel of the kingdom is more than words. It's also power. It is the power of God. It's the power of God for us to walk in victory every day's day of our lives. You don't have to be up and down, up and down, up and down. You can walk from mountaintop to mountaintop to mountaintop to mountaintop. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because that's the God we serve. Now, if you get in the valley, God will bring you out. But you don't have to get down there. You don't have to. The only way you can get in the valley is you quit looking at the kingdom of heaven and you look at the kingdom of this world. You quit living from inside out. And you're living from outside in. You become dependent. On the things of the earth. Instead of the things of the kingdom. Now let's go to. Matthew chapter 6. Starting with verse. 8. We was there just a minute ago, but I want to read on past that too. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now Jesus is telling the, the disciples, this is how you should pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What's heaven like? That's how the earth should be. That's how we should be in the earth. We're supposed to have some heaven to go to heaven in. We're supposed to walk out our days, walk out our lives as the days of heaven upon the earth. And we can do that when we live from the outside, inside out. When we allow the kingdom that's inside of us. Everything we need in this life is here. All we have to do is learn to draw it out. Hallelujah. And when we learn to draw it out, then we can walk in the principles he wants us to walk in. Praise God. Now let's go to Mark chapter 4. And God, Jesus is going to explain to us how the kingdom works. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Starting with verse 1, he said, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Andrew, would you go to Luke, I'm going to stay, would you go to Luke chapter 8? Verse 11, please. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And in Luke 11, is also, 8, 11 is also the same parable, but notice what it says. It says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. 
So the sower went out to sow the word of God. See, the seed is the word of God. Now, I want, I want you to go over to verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. This is back. Just stay in Luke, Andrew, because I'm going to go back and forth. I'm sorry, <laughs> I should have told you. In uh, verse 11 back in Mark, For unto us, us, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. It's, we are to know how to operate the kingdom. We are to know it. Now, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, the Lord li uh, moves in mysterious ways. Well, read the book. It's only mysterious to you because you haven't read the book. He tells us how he moves. Now, there are the secret things of God which we, don't, we won't know. We don't know. I don't care how long you've studied the Bible how long you've prayed, no one knows when Jesus is coming back. Now we have signs that it's getting close, but no one knows the day, the hour, and the second Jesus is coming back, except Father. Mm -hmm. That's the secret things of God. But we don't need to know that. We don't need to know that to live in victory in this life. We just need to know he's coming back and to be ready. He said to be ready. He didn't say, you've got to figure out when I'm coming back. He said, just be ready when I come. Now we can know that. We can know that. We know to be ready when he comes. So it, it just bugs me when I hear people say, when, especially when it deals with healing, well, you don't know if God wants, because he moves in mysterious ways, you don't know what he wants. Well, read the book, and you'll know. If it's a mystery, it's been revealed. He says it's been given unto us to know. Not to guess, not to wonder, not to worry about, but to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And he's going to go on and explain exactly what it is. Then he says in verse 13, staying in Mark 4, stay where you're at, Andrew. And he said unto them, Jesus again says, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? So he's saying, if you understand this parable, you'll understand how the kingdom works. Because Jesus taught how the kingdom worked in parables. So if you understand this parable, you're going to understand how the kingdom of God works, how you can live from inside out. Hallelujah. And be a blessing to the world. But you've got to understand this parable. And when we understand this parable, then we'll understand how the kingdom works. Behold, there went out a sword so to sow. And verse, staying in Mark, verse 14 says, the sower sowed the word. Sowed the word. Verse 4, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Andrew, I want you to go to verse 12 in Luke 8. And we're going to go to verse 15 in Mark. And these are they by the wayside, which he just said in verse 4, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And Luke 8, 12 says, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. See, there's thousands of people Millions of people that have heard the gospel and never got saved. Now, I can think of myself, I heard the gospel more than once before I got saved. I don't know if anyone else did or not, but I did. See, I was guilty. I heard the gospel, the word, but didn't get saved because the devil came immediately and stole that seed. And you'll notice here, it didn't say the devil came and attacked the person, but what they... Stole the seed. What's the seed? The word. See, the devil's not against you. The devil's against you getting the word. Because once you get the word, you're defeating. Once you get the word, he's done. And he knows that. He knows that once you get the word, he's done. So he comes immediately to what? Steal that word. Steal that seed. To eat up, steal 
that seed so you don't get saved. Now, verse 5. And Andrew, you'll go to verse 13. I'll get there in a minute. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Verses 16 and 17 in Mark 4. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. You see people get saved, woo, you know, they down, woo, run all, yo, I got saved, I got saved, I got saved. And they're real happy and real joyful. And have no root, verse 17, in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended and you don't see them anymore. They and the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe in time of temptation, fall away. They have no root. They don't stay in the word. They don't, you see, they have to stay in the word for that seed to develop. Now, the devil couldn't keep them from getting saved, but that doesn't mean they'll, he'll give up on fighting because they're still getting some word, so he's still attacking the word. And now all of a sudden, these people don't have any root. And they hear that uh, by Jesus' stripes, you're healed. That you can be healed. They don't know. They decide, well, I'll try this, see if it works. They're not in faith. Because they haven't spent time in the Word. And two days later, it hasn't worked. And they say, I guess this doesn't work. And they say, well, I'll believe for my finances. And they don't have faith for that. Because they've never spent any time in the Word. They've never put any root to that word. And finances doesn't come, they don't come in the next day. Well, I guess it doesn't work. And eventually, after a while, they fall away. These are the ones that come to church for maybe a month. And then you don't see them anymore. Why? Because they never got any root for that seed. They didn't get in the word. They didn't continue in the word and allow the word to become deep-rooted in their hearts. See, this is the earth, the heart represents the earth. The heart represents the ground. And see, they didn't put the word in their heart. You know, then I don't use this scripture, but Dennis has used it many, many times. I'm going to turn to it real quick. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. See, you have to guard your heart. You have to. It's your responsibility. Okay, verse 7 in Mark 4. And some, some, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Verse 18 and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. You go to 14, please. Is it up there? Okay. Aha, boy. She's quicker than I am. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Now, it doesn't mean they're not saved. These are people that have served the Lord for years and years. And just, it just seems like nothing. <laughs> have you seen? It just seems like, you know, 30 years ago you knew, knew them as a Christian. And 30 years later, they're the same place they were. Why? Because the cares of the world. Or maybe they did advance for a while. But after a while, they did quit guarding their heart. And that's where the thorns came in. See, you have to guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? You have to guard what you hear and what you see. My nose. What you see with your eyes, not your nose. And what you speak. I'm learning eyes, nose, and mouth. <laughs> but see, that, yeah, that's how you guard your heart. What you hear, what you see, and what you speak. Because if you don't guard your heart instead of good seed, I mean, the good seed's down there, 
But if you let the 6 o'clock news, if you let the paper, if you let the internet into your heart more than the Word of God, all you're going to get is thorns. And it's going to choke the Word. And before long, you're going to be acting like the world. Instead of living from the inside out, you're living from the outside in. You're letting the world dictate terms to you instead of you dictating the terms to the world. And that's what happens. That's why we have to guard our hearts. You have to guard what you're listening to, what you see, and what you say. Because it'll go into you. It, the sower sowed the seed, which was the Word of God. Right? The sower sowed the Word. And if you don't sow the Word... How can you get a harvest? You know a million times zero is zero. Oh, God's going to give me a million times of what I give in this offering. What do you put in? Nothing. <laughs> a million times zero is zero. So you have to put some word, you have to plant some seed. If you'll plant the seed, it'll meet the need. But you have to plant that seed first. And the way you plant it is by studying the Word of God, by reading the Word of God, by hearing good teaching on the Word of God, and by what you say. Make sure what you speak is the Word of God. The sower sowed the seed, which was the Word of God. So the sower was sowing the Word of God. So we've got to make sure we're sowing the Word. That's what's going into our heart, and it'll be good seed. So we'll see now in verse... 8, back in Mark 4, 8. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. And in verses, verse 20 it says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60 some 115. Okay, I'll go to it. What it says in Luke 8, 15. <laughs> but, that un, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. That means they guarded it and bring forth fruit with patience. I like that because it says with patience. Because it's not always going to be instant. Because we're called to walk by faith, to live by faith, and having done all, stand. Faith. So every day we should be living by faith. That doesn't mean every day everything's going to be instant. It can be. And it will be. in some things. But some things we're just going to have to believe God for, stand in faith. Because it says we are. It says we have to fight the good fight of faith. So we're going to have to fight. The good fight of faith is keeping the devil from stealing the word from your heart. He's after the word. If he can get that word out or if he can get enough thorns in to choke the word off, it, same results. Same results. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 27. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly or the heart. It's not your stomach. It's talking about the heart. So your spirit, when you get born again, your spirit is looking in your heart when something comes up for some word for you to speak. It's there if you put it there. But if he doesn't see anything for you to speak except thorns and thistles, then that's what you'll speak. If all you'll speak is what the world tells you, that's what you're going to speak. What you put in your heart will come out of your heart. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Starting with verse 34. He tells us, Jesus tells us how this works. Verse 34. 
O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's in your heart in abundance? That's what's going to come out. See, in Romans 10, 8, 9, 10, it tells us where is faith? In your heart and in your mouth. Now, faith comes from the word. And if you put the word in your heart, faith is there, but it's not faith till it's released. See, and, and your spirit is digging through your heart looking for some word, looking for some good seed so it can produce 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. That's what it's looking to produce. Your, heart, your spirit's in there. Where's this word? Where's the word? David, where's the word? What have you been planting in your heart? There's a problem coming up, and I got the answer, but you haven't put the answer where I can get it to you. You haven't planted the seed so that you release it into the earth as faith when you speak it. You know, my spirit, I don't have anything to work with. Give me something to work with. We can conquer this problem. We can overcome this temptation. Give me something to work with. See, I've got to plant some seed. And if I'll plant some seed, when sickness attacks my body, my spirit, woo, immediately, what comes out of my mouth? Jesus himself took my infirmities, bore my pains and sicknesses, by Jesus stripes I'm healed and made whole. God sent his word, healed me and delivered me from all destruction. With long life will God satisfy me and show me his salvation. I will live not die and declare the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. See, I've planted that seed so when a problem arrives, the spirit knows the answer Spirit knows where to get it, and I know how to release it because it's there. But I've had to guard my heart, and I've had to put it there. But if all I ever did was listen to the world and the world system, well, I knew it. I knew I'd be sick again. I just knew it. I just knew it. Every year, the same thing comes on me, and every year it just keeps coming back. I don't understand how. Duh! Duh! You're giving the devil the right to do it every year. That's why it keeps coming back. But when you stand on the word of God, when it tries to get on you, no, it stop. You're not letting the devil steal that word. You've got to guard your heart. This is how the kingdom works. We've got to put the word in our hearts. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. The kingdom works on seed principles. That's how it works. But you've got to plant the seed. You're the sower. I can't sow for Andrew. She can't sow for me. She's got to sow for herself. I got to sow. Now I, we can encourage and help each other. But you've got to be the farmer. You've got to sow the seed. It's your field. You've got to sow the seed. And if you'll sow the seed, it will meet the need. Whatever it is. My goodness, this is a seed catalog. What do you want to plant in your garden? What do you want to plant? Whatever you need, it's here. My, my goodness, you can have a thousand acres of corn, beans, beets, bro I don't care, broccoli, I don't, you can have it all. This seed catalog's for you. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's for me. That's for me. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's for me. Beloved, I wish above all things thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as a soul prosper. That's for me. You'll live and not die and declare the wonderful works of God. That's for me. With long life will God satisfy me and show me his salvation. That's for me. I, I want that seed. That, I want that seed. I'm going to plant that in my garden. I'm, boy, I got a big garden. Hallelujah. And you know what? You can have every seed God has in here. He doesn't care. There's no limit to the seed you plant. You know, God didn't say, well, David, you can have four different crops this year. No. And he didn't say you can have it just for the, you can have it every day of your life. See, with God, you plant the seed, it meets the need. You plant the seed, it meets the need. You plant 365 days a year and 366 on leap year. Hallelujah. And you also, you plant and you reap. You sow 
and you reap. You reap the promise, you plant another seed. You reap the plum, promise, you plant another seed. You just keep doing it. There's no limit to God. Hallelujah. Farmers don't have anything in us. They don't even have a clue how to farm compared to what we can do. Hallelujah. If we'll just do it. If we'll just do what God's called us to do. I got a couple more scriptures. Um, uh, I want to go to Daniel. Chapter 10. Read verses 11 through 13. I've gone a little long, but uh, <clears throat> and in starting verse Daniel has been uh, praying to understand why Israel's been in captivity, and the Lord explains and answers things for him. And he's been seeking the Lord on things, and an angel comes to him. And he says, and he said unto me, O Daniel. A man, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chase thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Daniel spoke words and immediately the angels went to work to bring him the answer. Verse 13. He had been waiting three weeks for this. And verse 13. See, a lot of people give up after 20 minutes. After a day. After a week. After a month. He said, and then they say, well, I guess God didn't want me to have it. They act like God's got it up there, but you've got to pry it away from him. Let me tell you something, folks. If you have to pry something away from God, you're never going to get it. You're not. You might as well not even pray. If you think you have to pry it from God, you're going to out-wrestle God. If you have to pry it from his hand, forget it. Don't bother praying. You're not going to get it. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. 21 days. The devil was fighting what? Daniel had planted a seed. And he was trying to get Daniel out of faith. 21 days. If it takes time, it's not because God's reluctant to give it to you. It's because the devil's trying to stop that seed from manifesting in your life because once you walk by faith in one thing, that's going to only strengthen you to do it again. Yeah. Hey, if this works in healing, it'll work in finances. If this works in finances, it'll work in peace. If this works in peace, it'll work in my children's life. It'll work in my marriage. It'll work in my family. It'll work in my job. See, that's what the devil's trying to stop. He's trying to stop you from being a successful farmer. And then one more scripture in Psalms 103, verse 20. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Every time the devil, every, yeah, forgive me, Every time an angel hears the word, it hearkens under that word to make that word come to pass. But it's got to hear it. So, what do you hear right now? What are the angel, what's the angel hear right now? Nothing. See, he hearkens to the word. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The angel heard something. The word of God. And he's hearkening to make that come to pass. By Jesus' stripes I'm healed. The angel heard something. He's hearkening to bring that pass in your life. Hallelujah. So we've got to put the angels to work for us. That's what they're for. And we do that by speaking the word of God. They hearken 
and the voice of his word. So if we want God working in our lives, we need to what? Be planting seed. We need to be speaking his word. And when we speak his word, the angels go to work immediately. Now the devil may be fighting them. They may have to fight for 21 days. They may have to fight for 21 minutes. It doesn't matter. But we stay in faith and we get the answer. We get the answer if we stay in faith. The only way we don't get the answer is if we quit. If we give up, we won't get the answer. But if we'll stay in faith, we'll get the answer. Hallelujah. And that's how the kingdom works. Plant the seed and then release it into the earth the angels will go to work to make that seed manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the keys to the kingdom. That's how the kingdom principles work. Because all our answers come from the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is within us. That's how we live from inside out. We call those things that be not as though they were. And they become. Hallelujah. Well, how long do I have to do it? Until they manifest. Mm -hmm. Call those things that be not until they are. Mm -hmm. That's how long you do it. Mm -hmm. Then it's manifest. Then you go on to something else. Mm -hmm. And something else. And something else. You just keep planting seed. And you keep harvesting the seed. And you keep planting. And you keep harvesting. And you keep planting. Sowing and reaping. Hallelujah. Sowing and reaping. Day after day after day after day. Learn what's in your seed catalog. And put it in your heart. And watch God change your life. You can live from the inside out. Hallelujah. Because we just have to plant the seed. And it will meet the need. If we'll do our part, God's done his part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that your word is more than enough. That your ability is in each promise to meet every need that is in this world today. God, you're more than enough. Hallelujah. And we thank you for Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price for us to be able to walk this victorious life all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen.